Around Dodge City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Starring William Conrad, the story of the violence that moved west with young America, and the story of a man who moved with it. I'm that man, Matt Dillon, the United States Marshal. The first man they look for and the last they want to meet. It's a chancy job, and it makes a man watchful and a little lonely. <laughs> That tall and Barkus over there, Mr. Dillon? No, that's his paw. Now, he probably knows where the boy is, though. Hey, let's wait here till he gets those sheep clear of the brush and out onto the grass. Look at that blamed dog go, Mr. Dillon. Why, he's doing more handling of them sheep than old Jeb is. Now, he's taking good care of them, all right. Now, let's go talk to Jeb. Sure do wish we didn't have to, Mr. Dillon. Ah, so do I, but we don't have much choice. No, sir. We sure don't. But ain't it too bad, though? He's such a nice old fella. Yeah, Jeb's all right. Miss Barkers is a fine lady, too. Chester, I like the family, too, and I'm just as sorry about this as you are. Yes, sir, Mr. Dillon. Howdy there, Marshal. Kind of far piece off the beaten path now, ain't you? Yeah, I guess so, Jeb. How are you? Fit, hale, and ready for any plague that heaven wants to send. Morning, Chester. Uh, morning, Mr. Barkers. How do you like that flock of sheep, Marshal? That looks like they wintered all right, doesn't it? Yeah, wintered fine. Mighty hungry right now, though. I reckon they'll be eating their heads off the next few days. If you ask me, they've already started to. Well, I've been holding them back there in the brush for a week and a half till this grass dried off. Put them on when it's muddy, and they just tromp it down without eating more than half of it. Sheep's got no sense at all. No, I guess not. Well, that dog of yours has sure got plenty of sense. He's about as close to humans as i ever seen. Maybe better than some, Chester. That dog would fight a cougar or a wolf pack till they killed him before he'd let him cut a single sheep out of the flock. He always takes care of his own, barn in him. Sheep dogs like that. Well. Uh, Jeb, is your boy all enough here with him? He might be down around the house. I know, always stop by there. Well, I don't know. I left before sunup this morning. Your wife said Arlen didn't come home last night, Jeff. <laughs> now, Marshal, you know how young folks are. Yeah, sure, I know. Arlen's been kind of restless lately. Growing pains, I reckon. Wants to stay around Dodge and work cattle this summer instead of going along when we take the sheep out onto the prairie. Yeah, he'll settle down after a while. You know where I might find him, Jim? Well, he ought to be home any time now. Ordinarily, he ain't one to, well, uh, you know, one to stay out all night. Tell me, Marshal, is this something official? Yeah, I'm sorry, Jeb. It's trouble with the law. Well, Arlen ain't never been in no trouble. Not real trouble. Well, he is now. He was in town last night, Jeb. Till near morning, there was an argument over a poker game, and he shot Will Peterson. No. Did he, did he kill him, Marshal? Will was still alive when we left a ride out here. Well, I don't hold none with gunfighting, but if Will Peterson drawed on my boy, he had a right to defend himself. Will wasn't wearing a gun. I don't believe it. Somebody's lying. Yeah, maybe, but that's something that jury's going to have to decide. If thine own offend, deliver them not under Canaan, but judge ye the false thereof in thine own tents. The law doesn't look at it that way, Jeb. Harlan's one of my flock, Marshal. I'm sorry, but i got to take all of them in for trial. And the best advice you can tell him is to give himself up. Marshal, I'll have to think about that and talk to him before I decide. All right, you do that, Jim. The 
But before you make any move, you'll regret just remember one thing. Get out a sheepdog, Jeb, and the law's not a wolf pack. Orland is charged with attempted murder. And he's gonna stand trial. Another visit with Joe and Daphne Forsythe. Joe? Joe? Joe, stop reading that paper and talk to me. I'm listening. Go ahead. Well, I was talking to Mrs. Snyder today. You know, she's the one whose boy had 31% less cavities. Uh Uh-huh. Well, she thinks that we should buy bigger savings bonds. Uh Uh-huh. She says that when people can afford it, it makes more sense. Oh, she says there are a lot of different denominations. They start at $25, but then there are a 50, 100, 200, and even $500 bonds. Is that so? And then with the ones we've already bought through the payroll savings plan, we'd have quite a nest egg. Uh-huh. Are you listening to me? Uh-huh. Did you know that the total accumulated compounded semi-annual interest of the Series E savings bond will amount to 93 and a third percent of the original purchasing price? Uh-huh. I thought so. Joe, what did I say? Uh, you said that United States savings bonds are a safe, easy way of investing. I did. That they help guard our country's freedom. And? They're the best investment in America's future. I said something else, too. Oh, yeah. You said that the total accumulated compounded semi-annual interest of the Series E savings bond will amount to 93 and one-third percent of the original purchase price. Well, now, how did you do that? Husband's trade secret. Me, Matthew. Oh, how are you, Miles? Um, have you been up to Doc's office? Yeah, I was just coming from there. Is uh, Will Peterson? He's still alive, Miles. Uh, Doc's doing all he can for him. Oh, it's a terrible thing, Matthew. Will's a fine man, hard working, wife and family. Yeah, I know. That's pretty tough on Jeb Barkas too. He just couldn't believe a son of his would shoot a man down the way Orland did. Miles, you were there last night, I mean, at the poker game, weren't oh, you? Oh, I, I was. Tell me, was there any excuse at all for what the boy did? Will accused Orlin of cheating with the cards, which she was doing, as well as all of us with a liquor sense knew he was. And the lad knew that we knew. Perhaps that's what made him so mad. Well, he's always been pretty touchy. Well, before one of us knew what he was up to, he hauled out his gun and shot Will twice. And then he ran out of the place, hollering he'd kill any one of us that came after him. If Will dies, that's cold-blooded murder, Matthew. Nothing else but... It sure sounds like it. Well, I'll... uh... uh, Matthew, I I think there's something that you ought to know. Oh, what? There's uh, a talk around town that's been getting louder all day. What kind of talk? Well, some of them are saying that you're not making any effort to find that boy and bring him in. And any of them think they could do a better job? It might be they're aiming to try, Matthew. Yeah, I see. Who's talking the loudest, Miles? Well, Riff Kelso mostly, I reckon. Yeah, sure. Riff always gets real law-abiding when he thinks there's a chance of making it mob law. Aye. Well, I, I thought maybe you ought to know about it. I'm not much obliged to you, Miles. Aye. Riff gets a bunch of drunken loafers around him. There's no telling what he might do. Mr. Dillon? Yeah, what is it, Chester? Old Jeb Barker's over at Long Branch. Oh? He slipped in the back way, says he wants to see you. Ah, oh, good. Uh, Miles, let me know if anything serious gets started, will you? Oh, I surely will, Matthew. Is he by himself, Chester? Well, I don't know for sure. He won't say nothing till he sees you. Well, I hope he's brought the boy in. It'd be better all the way around if he has. Well, how do you know Orlin even went home, Mr. Dillon? Maybe he just hit the trail out of town. Now, I'm betting different, Chester. 
Orland's not trail-wise. He's never been away from home in his life. He'd need a bedroll and grub and money. He'd run out on that poker game without even picking up his winnings. Hello, Matt. Chester. Kitty. Kitty. Uh, Kitty, is Jeb Barker still here? Um, yeah, back there in the corner below the stairway. Oh, good. Uh, Matt, have you caught the boy yet? No, not yet. What's it all about? I'm not sure, Kitty. Do I talk to Jeb? Is Will Peterson still alive? Yeah, so far he is. You know, there's a lot of talk around here. Yeah, I know. Miles McTaggart's just telling me. That talk never moved any mountains, Kitty. Yeah, it's moved mobs, though. Suppose Will dies, Matt. Uh, Kitty, a man would go crazy on this job if he went around supposing things. Just the same, it could mean trouble. I forget it. Well, I'm going over there and talk to Jim. All right, Matt. Evening, Jeb. I figured I ought to come and tell you, Marshal. It was the only just thing to do. Have you seen all of them? Yeah, I've seen him. Where is he? Marshal, we've been friends for a long time, you and me. I got all the respect in the world for you. But I reckon this time we're on opposite sides of the fence. Oh? Orlin ain't guilty. He told me all about it. There were three of them jumped him just because he was winning. And all three of them was armed. He had to kill in self-defense. The others tell it in a different way, Joe. It's lies they made up among themselves. Execute justice and righteousness in the land, the book says. But they won't. They're out to hang him. I heard the talk around town tonight. Judge Bent's an honest man, Jeb, and you know that. Orland will get a fair trial. I'm sorry, Marshal. He ain't going to trial. All right, Jeb. I've been laying back giving you a chance because I figured it'd be better that way, but I can't do it any longer. You're making the biggest mistake of your life, Jeb. Now, you just think about it. Is Will any better at all? No. Yeah, it's a thankless job, Matt, doctrine. No matter what you do, people are going to die anyway sooner or later. But a lot of times you can try to make it later. Yeah. Yeah, Hey, want some coffee, Matt? Yeah, I guess so. You know, it'd be a lucky thing for old Jeb and the boy if Will does manage to pull through. Found it, Matt, part of it's old Jeb's fault. He's rode too close herd on that young one. Oh, thanks. You never give him a chance to grow up. Yeah, maybe you're right. Matt, people are going to go right on committing crimes and dying, no matter what you and I try to do about it. So why don't we just give up? I don't know, Doc. Why don't we? Maybe I should just stick to my coroner's job and forget the rest. Yeah, then all I have to do is tell if somebody's dead or not. John? Yeah, Chester. Riff Kelso's coming down the street. Got a mob of drunks with him. He has, huh? <laughs> Doc, I'll see you later. I'm going to arrest Arlen and jail him on an assault charge before they really start something. Oh, Matt. Huh? Wait. Yeah? Will is dead. And I'll bring Arlen in for murder. Did you ever pick up a newspaper or magazine, read an interesting article, and then put it down and say to yourself, I wish I knew more about that? Well, you're in a position to know more about a number of things. As a member of the United States Armed Forces, you have the opportunity to continue your education through the United States Armed Forces Institute. USAFI courses are almost limitless. There might even be one on the subject of that article you read. A simple inquiry on your part can open up vast new horizons to you. You may study alone or in a group. Both types of courses are available through USAFI. 
Why not take advantage of this opportunity? Develop power through knowledge with a Yusafi course. He's got quite a bunch with him. Yeah, they're bar flies mostly and drifters going along for the show. Keep your eye on Mike Ellery and Red Stoddard. I'll handle Rip Kelso. The rest of them don't count. All right, Chief. You boys got something in mind? More than you got, Marshal. The way things look. I suppose you'd tell me about it, Riff. Dang right we'll tell you about it. We're all friends of Will Peterson's, Marshal. We aim to see justice done. That's fine. So do I. Well, then why ain't you done nothing about it? You had since last night to find that kid and bring him in. What are you trying to do? Let him get clear out of the country? He hasn't gone any place. How do you know where he's gone? You sure ain't spent no time out looking for him, and all the while Will laying up there dying. You're wrong, Riff. Will's already dead. Dead? You hear that, boys? Will's already dead. That murdering little rat shot Will down in cold blood, and the marshal ain't even bothered to go after him. At least not till now. Now that he's given that murderer plenty of time to get away. You got any reason figured out why I'd do that? You're dang right I got a reason. Everybody in town knows you and Jeb's been friends for years. What I say is, if there's going to be law, there's going to be law for everybody. And that goes for the marshal's friends, too. Well, I'm glad to see you've changed your way of thinking, Riff. So you and your boys are out to enforce the law tonight, is that it? You're dang right, that's it. We got the rope along to enforce it with if you ain't mad enough to do your duty, then we're going to do it for you. All right, Riff, shut up and listen. All right, so you two, shut up! Because this is the last one and you're going to get. All I've been marshal here, nobody's ever been strung up by a mob. And as long as I go on being marshal, nobody's ever going to be. Now, is that clear? Yep. Bucking a pretty good-sized crowd here, ain't you? Not as big as the law, Riff. Might be we're aiming to change the law some, Marshal. And the lawman right along with it. Anybody who wants to apply for the job is welcome to put in his bid any time. How about right now? <laughs> That's not the way to apply, Riff. Not with a gun. Now, are there any other candidates? All right, then a couple of you carry him upstairs and get Doc to patch him up. He's not hurt bad. And the rest of you get on about your business. Now, go on, move. All right, Chester. Let's go bring in Orland. Much sign of life around, Mr. Dillon. Yeah, there must be somebody here. House is all dark. Yeah. Oh, watch yourself, Joseph. No telling what that crazy kid will do. Yes, sir. Maybe old Jeb took the whole family and run for it. Now there's a horse and wagon tied by the barn there. Well, well, well I don't reckon they'd go off and leave a horse standing hitched, would they? Who is it? Who's there? It's Matt Dillon, Chad. Are you alone? I'm alone, Marshal. Come on up. Hey, 
Jeb, I can't make it easy on you any longer. Will Peterson died a little while ago. I reckon I already know it, Marshal. Somehow I just kind of felt it. The charge is murder now, Jeb. I've come for Arlen. Yeah, I know. Arlen come running home, Marshal, scared half to death. Just like he'd always done when he was a little shaver. Begged me to help him, and I listened to him and believed him. He was lying, Jeb. I was going to hide him, help him get away. I no places to hide. Jeb, where is he? Marshal, you told me that it was a lot more than just a wolf pack after the flock. You told me I was making the biggest mistake of my life. Jeb. Now, wait a minute. When I come back out from town tonight, Arlen was fixing to leave on his own. He broke into the box where we keep our savings. Pretty near $300. And he hit his ma when she tried to stop him. Hurt her pretty bad. Where'd he go, Jeb? I found him out in the barn, Marshal, saddling his horse. He had some food and my rifle that he was aiming to take along. I argued with him, and he laughed, and he said, Sure, Will Peterson wasn't wearing no gun. I grabbed the rifle away from him, and he knocked me down. Then he drawed his gun and aimed it at me. Aimed his gun at his own father. Jeb, you're going to have to tell me where is he. I was just fixing to drive into town, Marshal. Arlen's there in the back of the wagon. I shot him dead. Smoke, produced and directed by Norman McDonald, stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. The script was specially written for Gunsmoke by Les Crutchfield, with editorial supervision by John Meston. The music was composed and conducted by Rex Corey. Sound patterns were by Ray Kemper and Bill James. Featured in the cast were Parley Bear as Chester, Howard McNear as Doc, and Georgia Ellis as Kitty. George Walsh speaking. Join us again next week for another specially transcribed story on Gun Smoke. This is the United States Armed Forces Radio and Television Service.